Hello, and welcome to Now You're Cooking with Gas. This video is about using a gameplay ability to spawn a firing arc while holding down the fire button and launching a projectile on release. So the first thing we're going to do is create a projectile that can be fired by this ability. It's just going to be an actor. I'm just going to call it BP Grenade for no specific reason related to future videos. This will just have a sphere collision, which will make the root. Rename it so it doesn't conflict. Add a sphere and a projectile movement. The collision, I'm going to set the radius to six. The sphere, I'm going to set the scales. 0.1 and the projectile movement I will set the initial and max speeds to 2000. I'm also going to create another actor. Call this BP Path Sphere. This one is just going to be a sphere at the root. Set that scale to the same 0.1 and make sure there's no collision. This actor is what we will spawn and move around to represent the path. Next, I need to make a gameplay ability. This is GG Gameplay Ability. And we'll call this GA Fire Grenade. First thing we're going to do, as usual, get Avatar Actor from Actor Info. We're going to cast that to BP Third Person Character. Save that as a variable. Just call it character. We want to commit ability. And we're going to make two functions, one called trace path and another called fire. So we're first going to call trace path and then call wait input release. While we're waiting for the input to release, we will call wait or task wait delay. I'm just going to throw a very small amount of time on here. And this is go just going to call trace path over and over. And I did have it first. Correct first. There we go. And that's just going to loop around. On release, we're going to call the fire function. And of course, end ability. We want to make sure that this has an ability input ID of fire ability. Since we're going to be spawning a bunch of BP path sphere, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it path. This will be of type BP path sphere. And it will be an array. So the first thing we want to do in here is sequence. 
We're going to take the path array, do a for each. And we're just setting the sphere to invisible. So set visibility is called on the sphere component. And then down here, we're going to use the character to call a function, a utility function that we create based on GA fireability base that we uh, created earlier. In the fire function here, we are using this get world rotation and the forward vector and whatnot to get the spawn location and spawn rotation for a projectile. So we're going to copy this into the character class, our blooper. I'm going to create a function called calc fire point. Paste that in here. So this is just going to add return node. Going to return the location. And rotation. Need to clean this up a little bit. So the follow camera is what we're using for here and here. And then the camera boom was what we were using for the target arm length. With that there, we can call it here. And we're going to use this to call predict projectile projectile path by trace channel. The start position will be that location. The launch velocity will be the forward vector multiplied. We'll switch the second one to right click it or by right clicking it to float. We'll set this to the value that matches the projectile. And that will be the direction. We'll just set a radius of five and the trace channel to projectile. And then we're going to ignore the character. So drag that out called make array and just throw the character in there. This function will take care of the physics, uh, which namely is the gravity and the uh, the launch velocity. Uh, and it'll give us a, an array of path positions. So we're going to just promote this to a local variable. We'll call this path positions. And then we're going to iterate through that array. However, we want to iterate effectively both through both the path positions and the path. So instead of using a for each, we're going to take this array, get the length, once I spell length properly, oh, it's just length, not get length. We're going to do the same with the path. And then our for loop going to start at zero, 
and go to the max between these two lengths, minus one. So if this is a five and this is an eight, this will obviously be the higher one. And then the loop will go from zero to eight minus one, seven. Uh, this is inclusive, so you'll get entries for zero through seven. Inside the loop, for convenience, I'm going to set the index to a local variable and call this path pause index. I'm going to use this index to compare against the length of the path positions array. Hold B and click. So as long as the index of this for loop is less than the length of the path positions, then we want to show or create a path sphere. If it's not, that's because the path array was larger in which case we can uh, effectively do nothing else after that. So as long as that's true, we'll use a sequence. In the case where the index is less than the size of the path array, that means there is already a path sphere created at that point in the array. So we just use false instead to spawn an actor. Just type as path sphere. We can leave these values alone because we're going to set them when we make that sphere visible. And then here we're just going to add this entry to the path. In the other path of this sequence, we're going to go back here. I'm just going to copy this. And this is for the path. We're going to get the entry based on the path position index. And we're setting the visibility to visible in this case. And then we're setting the actor location, Oops. which I want to drag up from here. This location would then be the path position array at the same point. So to quickly go over this one more time, 
at the start of this function, which is just called in a loop while holding the uh, fire button down. Uh, we're just iterating through the path array, just setting all the uh, BP path spheres to invisible. And then we're calculating the fire point to use it to call the predict projectile path by trace channel. That will return a, an array of path positions. And then we're going to iterate through both arrays to spawn a BP path sphere for a position. And lastly, we need to hook this up in the third person character. So we need to add in default abilities. The GA fire grenade. Lastly, when end ability is called, we want to iterate through the list of BP path spheres and call destroy actor. As I hold left click down, you can see that it's creating the path, moving it around. Let go and it disappears. Lastly, we will just add on release in the fire function. We're just going to call calc fire point from the character. Use that to spawn the grenade actor. and send along that location and rotation. So I aim at a line over here, release, and it shoots it, and it hits where it was pointing. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and you would like to see more, you know what to do. If you have suggestions on future content or abilities you would like to see, let me know down below.